You're here at the PHNX <laughs> studios after that tilt for the Arizona Coyotes. Woo! <laughs> what a freaking game that was. Thank you all so much for tuning into the PHNX Coyotes post game show and shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Fridays. I can't think of a more Flavoring Friday that game, was a flavoring Friday game. Than that game. That game was high. Head on over to ogsbrands.com to see their full lineup, including their two newest gummies, the OG's Naturals and the Big OG's, and find out where you can purchase. And don't forget to hit that like button. The mullet magician had to turn around on the freeway. He thought he was out. And with all the traffic downtown. I mean, he might be stuck in traffic. We need to hit those likes up. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah here with Petey and Danielle. Craig calling in for mullet shortly. Petey, what was that? What? What what happened? (laughs) What what happened? I'm wondering now, if you watch the game today, a lot of the goals were scored in that one end. And so I'm wondering if if somehow the ice was tilted. Because it seemed like in the second period, it was all tilted. Get get the uh, tinfoil hat on. It was all tilted for the Vegas Golden Knights way in the second period. And then the third period... I, I, I've honestly got I would say you've never seen it before because you haven't seen it before for the, a, a comeback to that level for this Arizona Coyote team I, against a, a, an outstanding Golden Knights team that needs the points that needs the point. that timeout, Mr. Cassidy didn't work. It didn't work. Did and it's funny because I was a little worried. I thought, oh, boy, Uh-oh. here we go. Like, don't Here's get comes too the excited. Comeback. No, no. The Wait, comeback did not come. I, it was, you know what? It, it's funny because I was talking to some people. I went to the mullet to the game tonight and it was in the, in the building in the first period and people that haven't been to a lot of games said wow this coyote team is really fast and i said that's how they're supposed to play in the mullet that is what you expect for them in the mullet that's what they did last year they surprised teams with their speed early in games at the mullet arena and i think they did that tonight and and vegas golden knights were on their heels in the first and i think in the second period after they sat down in the in the intermission and between the first and the second they go okay let's let's go and Vegas really took it up a notch I know I listened to the broadcast tonight and it was, it was kind of like oh the Coyotes didn't come with consistency Vegas turned it up in the second that Vegas this Vegas Golden Knight team is really good they want a Stanley Cup and they're they're a team that's favored to be you know bay it back there again this season they turned it up but I have to give the Coyotes kudos because it's it is difficult to come back from four to one like that's insane <laughs> Four to one it in was, the third? It was four to one when the, the third. third period started. It in was four third. to one. It was four to one. It's it's it's, it's absolutely insane. And, and you look at the players that got the got it started, and it's a Josh Doan again. It's you got Carcone. Michael Carcone <laughs> again scoring in bunches. It was exciting to be a Coyotes fan again. And, and you know what? I know we're gonna have to talk about it when Craig gets on. We're gonna have to talk about the other thing. But for the first little bit here, we can talk about hockey. And it was fun to watch this team play well against a good team. And I think that that, again, we're trying to find those little bright spots for the future and things you can look to. I think this is a game that you can go back and you go, God, that was a lot of fun. Six goals in one period against a good hockey team. Not only six goals in one period, six goals in nine minutes and six what? seconds. Is that true? Yes, I did the math. Um, not your strong suit, though. It's not Let's my strong suit, so if I may mess up, forgive me. <laughs> Josh Down scores, Bukestad scores 57 seconds later, Carcone <sighs> scores 10 seconds later. Wow. That was the three fastest goals in Coyotes team history, which was beat the record set earlier this season against the Kings on October 17th, which was a minute nine. That was a minute Insane. seven. Then... You just look at the six goals in the third period in general. Ties a franchise record for most goals scored in a single period. 15 players on this team tonight had a point. Every single forward had a point. That's insane. It's insane, especially for a team that has very little to play for. Um, With all the the turmoil and controversy going away off the ice, which we're going to talk about again, against a team that needs the points. 
that came in yesterday after a day off that two days between games that's well rested and needs the points. Like, I, I, there's no way I would have predicted this outcome tonight. And especially after Vegas came out in the second period, you go, okay, they turned it up. This this team, this one's over. Let's let's start the postgame show now. I, complete hats off to the Coyotes and, and their continued effort. And let's let I'm giving flowers early. I don't know if it's in your rundown because I didn't read it. Just go for it. But but, but flowers to the, the video coach of the Arizona Coyotes, Hunter Churney does it again. And I seven we're, for seven uh, on so offside Hunter, calls. I, I don't know if you're listening, Hunter, because I know you're a big listener of the of the show. But 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 but. When when they went to center ice and said the Coyotes are challenging for offsides, we knew. Like, we knew the second they said offsides and Hunter Churney in the same breath, <laughs> you knew it was no goal. Seven for He's seven. He's absolutely money on the offside. So that is a big turning point in this game, though. It, I mean, huge, huge. The game was tied at that point. Yeah, huge turning point yeah. in this game. And and um, so, again, that's it's funny how much pressure is on a video guy now to make these kind of calls. But great job to, to Hunter Tree. That, that sincerely changes the tide of this game. OK, there's some amazing comments in the chat. Uh, first of all, BC, as a Kings fan, I enjoyed the end to that game. And then we had um, and for saying that was unreal. Canucks fan here. Cheering y'all fan. on. Appreciate that. JJ down four one went to wash the dishes, came back six so, four lead. <laughs> I think we could say it's JJ that, that helped push this yes. game along. We're that, all into the fan theories that that we make a difference. Then so. I love this one. When is it my turn? Give me some drama, mean, because I'm staying on the coaster, <laughs> baby. <laughs> well, yeah, that was it. Was what it like? We we you have to admit. I, and again, a peek behind the curtain. We prepare for the show. I know it sometimes doesn't look like we actually <laughs> prepare for it, but we do. And and there's there's graphics, there's things that that go into making the show. And I will have to admit, after the second period, we were kind of leaning in a different direction. Is that fair? I I mean, it was four one. Yeah, so 4-1. yes, we were. So we're leaning in a little different direction, and then we started to believe. We and it, it, it's an amazing comeback. I, I, when they scored that second one in that quick of succession, the the, the four two four three, you're like, oh my gosh, are they really gonna do this? <laughs> and and you could just see the joy on their some of their faces. Like, look at Michael Carconi, oh, who has gone through streaky scoring streaks all season long, and the, just the weight off his shoulders again, and and the absolute joy in his face when he scored the first one. And that's what sports is to me. That when you can get that kind of a joy, the playoffs don't matter. This team's not in the playoffs. They're literally playing for nothing. They're playing out the streak. There's seven games to go. All those things are true. But you see it for just those little glimpses when they look like little kids again. When it was fun to just play a game. And, and how, how I, the one thing with Vegas, as as the Coyotes started to get back in this, Vegas really started to tighten up. Yeah. And, and I mean, they were clenching their sticks. They were making bad passes. They were turning the puck over. That's not the Vegas Golden Knights. And I, it's hard because when you're supposed to be the team that's better and you're the team that's, oh, okay, we just have to play and, and, and it'll happen. The longer the game goes when you're not leading, man, it gets hard because then every guy has to do it himself. And that's where you start making more mistakes. And that's what happened to Vegas. This one just got away from them. And three of the seven, seven goals, is that right? <laughs> I mean, three of the seven went off Vegas night's sticks, legs, shin pads, butts. It was it was it was it was a tough night for the goaltender because it kept hitting the Vegas players and going in. And it started with Josh Dolan's off of the defenseman's leg. We can also credit Caden, who said dozed off on the couch at four four, woke up at seven four. Buddy, I, I will say I am very pro nap. <laughs> I know you so are. If I could have, if I could have slept from four one to seven four. PD, when you walked in. In the beginning of the second uh, period, I was fully reclined. You were ready I'm not to gonna sleep. lie. <laughs> and it was very quiet because the Diamondbacks had just oh, lost. Oh, and they were very upset. They were upset. Yeah. Do you, can I say something? Totally. Okay, this is to the Diamondback crew because I'm sure they're all listening. It's game five or <laughs> is it six? Know. I don't know. I think it's game six. They lost today like it was the end of the world. I, our season's over. And I'm not making that up. No. It was good grief. They, they clearly have not followed the Coyotes. They lost one game. They lost game six. Uh, and, and you're like, buddy, you've got 156 <laughs> to go. They'll be okay. But the, but then the vibe and the Coyotes, they they were still here, and they kept going back. Oh, four one, losing again, and then they kept coming back, and and then the Coyotes uh, kept scoring. It, it was, as a Coyote fan, one of the other things, if you were in Mullet Arena tonight, there were a lot of Golden Knights fans. <laughs> there were a lot of Golden Knights fans, and they did the anthem thing again <laughs> when they say night. Every night. It, 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 why do we have to do that? It's a, a knight is a K N I G H T, and that knight is a, is an in armor. 
there's not night like the night of, of a night when it's dark after day, which is what that night is in the song. I don't get it. I'm so over it. Oh, my goodness, PD. Okay, well, let's take a look at the numbers in this one presented by Desert Trouble Financial Felsic. Credit Union. What's in there sleeping? It's Friday. It's the end of a long week. Presented by Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union, named by Forbes. Shots on goal. Coyotes outshot the Vegas Golden Knights 33-24. to Both teams, no power play goals tonight, which is crazy in a 7-4 game. Coyotes 0-2. Knights 0-4. Face-offs essentially equal. Shot attempts 63 for the Coyotes, 51 for Vegas. Yeah, one of the things here, too, is Vegas Knights getting 24 shots on goal. This is only the fifth time this season they've had 24 shots or less. And two of those were in the first 10 games against Chicago. Two of them against Chicago to start the season. So you've got two against Chicago, one against one against the Arizona, and then you've got the New York Rangers. You've got some better teams in there. But it's only the fifth time they've only had 24 shots on goal. And again, I expected that pushback from this team. I really did. And I know they're injured and that this team is banged up. And I know surprising they've got some guys on LTIR. Is that a surprise? Which is just saying, right? And I bet I'm just a prediction here. I'll put on my, my, my little magic Karnak hat. You don't know who Karnak yeah. is either, but, but there's a reference. Um, it's a thing. I would bet some guys get healthy before playoffs start. Hmm. Just saying. Between game 82 and game one of the playoffs, I just have this feeling that some guys might come off of LTIR for the Vegas Golden Knights. Just saying. Well, let's give out some flowers. And let's start with Michael Carcone. <laughs> I don't know if does he get the the pinch he fingers? should he should Michael, Michael Carcone because you were Carcone you got the Vegas Golden Knights got Carcone and we've Carcone. been talking about one of the things that we wanted to see in the final stretch of games is we wanted to see Michael Carcone score twenty goals get twenty and he, goals and he he's had so many chances it feels like over the last few games you already mentioned it earlier in the show that he like he's had so many is here. Oh my gosh, what's up? We talked about the political we'll talk about yeah, that. We'll Sorry, talk I, about mean, that I didn't mean to interrupt your vibe, but when um, the cat comes in the room, you gotta <laughs> you gotta you, you gotta, gotta acknowledge. Yeah. He's had so many ups and downs this season. It's been he's been on the roller yeah. coaster. Give he him has. some drama. I mean, um Michael Carcone makes seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, and tonight he scored his twentieth and twenty first goals of the season. I could not be happier for him. He he grinded it out in the AHL. He paid his dues and he earned his spot here. And it hasn't always been easy. He's been a healthy scratch. He's had limited minutes and he's really made the most of every minute he's had on the ice PD because to be a 20 goal scorer in this league is not easy. We talked earlier a couple of weeks ago about the, the number of 20 goal scorers on this team. And this is the most the Coyotes have had in years, if not ever. Finally yeah. tonight, and Michael Carcone is one of those guys. It's crazy because you're talking about a guy, and you talk about limited minutes. The last two games, he played under nine minutes a game. Before that, he's playing 11 minutes. I mean, he's, he's not getting the minutes that you're seeing on some of the other 20 goal scorers on this team. Um, but he, but he just keeps he he keeps working, and he's a guy that's fun to watch because he's a you want to cheer for him for Michael Carcone because when he does his boots hit the ice, he, he, he gives it, he gives it everything he's got. I know sometimes there's some, there's been questions about his ability to defend from the blue line in, but offensively he's been outstanding, outstanding for Michael Carcone to get 21 goals this season. I think, I think we're all kind of surprised. Well, well like when he signed the one way con contract, we're, we were almost a little surprised. We felt he was the guy that's going to be in and out yeah. of the lineup. And he was yeah. earlier in the year, but he's got 21 goals now. Good for him. I, he's a guy that, that we root for because because you want to root for guys like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing eight minutes a game and he's getting 21 goals. Uh, fantastic. And and as, as Nick Nelson said, undrafted. An undrafted Unbelievable. player. Unbelievable. Yeah, good for Michael Carcone. And and uh, I, we we still like the meme. You just got carcone You got carcone I think we need a void like, you've got carcone Like I think. Oh, we need, I like that. We'll have to record it. Yeah. We will. Well, and it's no surprise. Michael Carcone has that desert dog in him. Two goals, five shots on goal. What a night from him. He absolutely earned it. Um, so congrats to Michael Carcone on a great night. Yeah, I, I thought he, he, again, from the blue line in, he works extremely hard and he made a lot of things happen. And funny, on one of his goals, the four check, uh, the one right after the timeout, you got to give it to uh, Liam O'Brien. Liam O'Brien in on the forecheck, separates the defenseman from the puck, makes a great play to Carcone, and Carcone gets his first, his actual 20th of the season, and a great forechecking play by Liam O'Brien. That's amazing. <laughs> Lots of talk, too, in the chat about Logan Cooley approaching 20. Um, he scores the empty net goal to get his 18th of the season, so now he's just two away from 20 with six games remaining, so that's starting to look more and more like a very real possibility, and it's looking like this team is going to have 
a number of 20 goals. Yeah, scores. and that hasn't happened for a while. No. Right? And you have to go back there in, in their entirety in Arizona. It hasn't happened that they that they have six. Like it happened. You have to go back to their, their last season in Winnipeg to get six. So that's impressive. And I know it's a team that doesn't make the playoffs, but when you talk about 20 goal scores and some of them are so young, even Clayton Keller, Clayton Keller's 25. He's not 30, he's 25. And this is the second consecutive 30 plus goal season for Clayton Keller. It's good to see they're getting the offense spread out on this team. And that's one thing that's you, you signify by these 20 goal scores is how balanced your scoring is and how many guys help provide the offense. This team in, in the past traditionally has one or two guys that are leading the way offensively and then it completely tails off. That's not the case this year. And, and it's exciting to see players like Logan Cooley and Michael Carcone, younger guys that are going to be a, a part of this team again next season. They're both signed for, for next year that, that you have other options offensively. And Clayton Keller is signed for a few more years. And you go, okay, they're, they have the ability to score goals. And one of the things we're always concerned about here is their ability to defend. And they don't have the defenseman locked up yet. But offensively, this, this team's ability to score goals is exciting to see. And you, we're going to take it a step farther. In four of the last five games, they've scored five goals or more. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Unbelievable. There's still so much to talk about, but one more thing I want to get to before Craig calls in is we're going to give Clayton Keller his flowers because Clayton Keller had a two point night tonight, had two assists. He now has 71 points on the season. It doesn't quite look like he's going to, you know, get the plateau he did last year, but still he's been formidable so much so that he is now on a 10 game point streak coming into tonight. He was on a nine game point streak, obviously, which was tied for the longest active point streak in the NHL. I don't know if 10 is the longest or still tied. I apologize. But tonight, Clayton Keller became the third skater in Coyotes team history with consecutive 70 point seasons. Jeremy Roenick did it from 98 to 01 and Shane Doan did it from 2007 to 2009. So congrats to Clayton Keller on once again writing himself in the Coyotes history. And, And one of the things Clayton Keller does, he does it consistently. And we're seeing a kid that came in in his first season, and he, he he performed extremely well his first season, a little sophomore slump. But the consistency out of Clayton Keller, not just season to season, but game to game. And and that ability to continue to put up points and have a guy that you can put the team on your back offensively and go, okay, Clayton Keller can get us out of this mess. I think that bodes well for a team that may be looking for the playoffs next year or the year after. You need somebody that can do that. Clayton Keller's an all-star, and he shows it. And when you put up t- points in 10 straight, uh, that's hard to do. I mean, if you go across the league and see how many guys have done that this season, it's very few. So so congratulations and well-deserved flowers for Clayton Keller tonight. Absolutely. All right. Well, the while the vibes are high, we're going to keep them high because on, and speaking of OG's Flavoring Fridays, yeah. on 420, on April 20th, we are going to Tucson what? for the Tucson Roadrunners season finale, and we are having a meetup at Illegal Pete's what? in Tucson on University on Saturday, April 20th at 5 p.m. ahead of the Tucson Roadrunners season finale. That game is at 7 p.m. And when you get your tickets, first of all, we want you to RSVP. It's completely free to attend the yeah, meetup. Free. But we want you to RSVP because when you go on the RSVP page, which I will drop in the chat, there is a link to buy Roadrunners tickets. What? And thank you to the Tucson Roadrunners because they are giving PHNX listeners a 40% off discount what? on tickets Is that true? to that game. It's fan appreciation night. It's going to be a great game. So we want to see everybody there in Tucson for the meetup. 40% off? Yep. And Diehards knew about this a couple days ago because Diehards get everything first. Diehards also get... 20% off on events, on merch, free shirt or hat it, sign up, a Die Hard card, access to Die Hard only content, access to our Discord. So many perks to becoming a Die Hard. So become a Die Hard today. Go phnx.com slash diehards and check out our events page, go phnx.com slash events. Also, what a night here. We had D backs, Suns, Coyotes, and then we had the women's uh, final the four, Iowa, game, Iowa yeah. UConn. So much going on. We have the, yes. the men's final four tomorrow, the women's championship Sunday, yes. the men's championship Monday. This is prime time for betting on sports. And Shane Diefenbach, the Diefenbach, as you like to call him, yes. sent me a great bet MGM parlay. parlay. Pick, what is the parlay today? It's called the final four. Okay. And you might be surprised. It's four picks, a four pick parlay on the final four. So here's what we have. See how clever it's that was. Two same game parlays parlayed together for four. So it's same leg. game parlay from each game. Got it. Two and two together. Okay? okay. So the first one we have UConn minus nine and a half and the under 160.5 parlayed with in the other game. 
NC State minus sorry, NC State plus 12 and a half and over 146 points. All of those together for plus 734. And I will say this, the defense lock knows his college he does. basketball. He definitely so does. I would ride that wave. Absolutely. So you can do so over at BetMGM. Sign up for BetMGM. Use the bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the BetMGM sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. And you receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets. If the bet loses, you can check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 8778-HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW-YORK. 467 Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. And it's also time, because we talked about the Final Four, it's time to enjoy the Final Four at Gila River Resorts and Casinos because no one does it better and no one does it better than they do down at the Wild Horse Pass Casino. Because uh, am I wrong? Right now, there is a watch, uh, what, not watch long, what do we call it? A watch party. A watch party. The uh, the Phoenix Suns watch party going on at Gila River Resort Casinos down at Wild Horse Pass and they are having another one on Sunday. Yes. And there's a lot of stuff going on. They're giving away Suns t- tickets. What? They're giving away a gift card and they're giving away a two night stay at Wild Horse Pass. So if you want to go watch the the Suns beat whoever it is they play, because I don't know. But <laughs> if you want to see that on Sunday, <laughs> make sure you go down to Wild Horse Pass and, and check it out because there is so much to do Wild Horse Pass. Not only do they have a state of their gaming floor, they've got the, the pool. Ridiculous. Take a staycation. Why don't you go take a staycation right now during Final Four? Watch all the sports on their massive, giant TV screen in the Arizona's only and large, not only, largest casino sport book inside a casino. It's that one. It's that one. So make sure you go down to Wild Horse Pass Casino. And plus, we talked about their theaters, all kinds of shows going on. Ice Cube is here this weekend. (laughs) Why? Because it's the Final Four. Tomorrow. And so don't miss that if you want to see him. 75, 75 feet from the worst seats to the stage at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, you do you. And visit playathila.com for more details. It's the Pelicans. It's the Pelicans, see? There you go. Thank you. By the way, someone in the chat pointed out the Coyotes now have 69 points. Nice. All right, let's bring him in. It's Craig. Is that true? The Coyotes have 69 points? Yes. Oh, Hi. Hey, that was weird. <laughs> I was looking at you guys and I got interrupted and Eric Ruby told me, uh, you're on the Sun Show now when I was calling into Studio B, so I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> I mean, I did want to talk a little, Sons, but I'm here, so let's roll with this instead. That's Who hilarious. Who knows what's going on right now with our tech? That, Who I knows what's like, happening with our tech? Craig, I feel like that just describes the night as a whole. Yes. What a weird game, guys. What a weird game. Like, you're down 4-1 to defending Stanley Cup champions going into the third period. It's over, right? It's over. Yes. We all thought it was over. What the hell happened tonight? I, 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 Craig, I, I don't know what happened because you, you watch uh, the Vegas Golden Knights had a chokehold on this team and points that they absolutely needed tonight, and the Arizona yes. Coyotes. I don't know if they just woke up or, if, or if, or if the Vegas Golden Knights just started to coast and this thing just got out of control and they couldn't get, couldn't get it back on the rails. Uh, the Oats looked good for, for a period and a half of this game. Like they, they were solid in the first period. I thought they had a really strong first period where they, they dominated the offensive side of the puck. They had the puck possession. And in the third period, man, that, that was that was a lot of fun to watch. I can't imagine the, the atmosphere inside the mullet, but we were having a great time here in the more furniture recliners um, and, and really enjoyed the I went the from being fully reclined this way to fully upright as the game went ah, on. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a fun atmosphere here as well. That third period was just nuts. As you guys saw, they tied a franchise record with six, six goals in a period. Lots of fun little storylines within this one. Michael Carcone getting to the 20-goal mark and – He's talked a lot about, you know, his his past and what a struggle it had been to even solidify a permanent spot. When, when we spoke to Andre Turinyi after the game, and I know Raz is sending you this clip, he talked about what a complete game Michael's been playing for about a month now. He's really liked his defensive effort. He's really rounded into a complete player. So good for him getting to the 20 goal mark and then sliding right on past it with that 21st goal, which was huge. Hunter Cherney, uh, maybe the, the best video coach in Coyotes <laughs> franchise history. Um, That's, yeah. That's I fair. mean, you might That's be fair. onto something. That's fair. That's fair. He's, not, he's got a long way to go to catch you, buddy. No, he's got fair. a long way to go. 
And then Josh Brown with that absolute missile bar down. Josh Brown. Wow. We called yeah, that Josh we, Brown we goal, didn't we? Tonight too, he Imagine just... the value on that yeah, anytime Josh goal Josh Brown score. anytime against Vegas. <laughs> oh, I missed out on that one. Night. One night at the mullet. It was a lot of fun. Wow. Um, and by the way, we Nikita Kucherov is in the chat. We love when Nikita joins. So welcome. Um, and he hey, Nikita, commented. I'm, I'm, I'm not voting for you for MVP, just so you know. Okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Savage. Um, Logan Cooley, 40 points right now on track with Jack Hughes at age 19. So yeah, there you go. We talked about uh, that he got 18. So now he's close to 20. Carcone passed the 20 goal mark. Like you mentioned, so many storylines. The Keller goal streak continues. Alex Kerfoot gets a goal for the first time since March 8th. Um, and, of course, Josh Stone. <laughs> yeah, jo- yeah, Josh Stone. Oh, yeah. I can't believe we haven't right? even mentioned him. But, S- but six was, points. Listen, we were talking, I was talking to Patrick Brown about this. It was an own goal, right? It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't anything he did. But he, what did he do? He got a puck to the net. Puck to the net. He got a puck to the net, and then suddenly the avalanche started for the Coyotes. It's the don't effect. It's the, it, it is the don't effect. But, but you're right. And we talk about the little things that Josh Stone does well. That's the play. And it's funny because I, was, I went back and watched. I rewatched the second period in the, in the second intermission to watch where all the mistakes were and what was happening. And, and the, 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 again, the defensive play and the turnovers, the same things we've seen. But there were those plays to the middle of the ice that don't, they don't get you anywhere in the offensive zone. Don't make those plays to the middle of the ice. The play that you make when you're in a position like Josh Stone was is you shoot the puck at the net. And yeah. even if it doesn't go off that player, you saw uh, Matias Michelli driving the net there. I think there was a, a really good scoring opportunity for Matias Michelli, but it just goes to the legend of Josh Doan that Josh Doan just does the little things right. He just he does. does. And I know it's it goes unnoticed a lot of the times. That one ends up in a goal. But those little details, if you do them consistently over time and you consistently do them right, good things happen. Doaned and carconed. <laughs> It's a really good point, Petey, but I'm preoccupied by the fact that Cody's making a perfect tie on my shirt right now. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> it's actually really, really good. Weird. And we saw Luke Lipinski with a perfect tie today. He had, he had the yeah, old... Yeah, Luke had a nice tie. He had a Phoenix, Phoenix Coyotes tie Ooh. with the old Kachina, and he said it's original. And I want to know where I get my hands on that, because I want one. Um, Jordino said, Petey, I ate pizza today, and Josh Stone scored. So we know that when Jordino eats pizza, Josh Stone scores. Josh Stone, six points in five games. So you absolutely mm. love to see it. The Don't Effect. Somebody in Discord said, we need a Don't Effect t-shirt. Yeah, I like Not that. against hey, it. Put hey, butterflies on it. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Some butterflies on it with the Don't Effect. Butterfly with the 91 on it. I don't know. We'll like work it. on it. I like Please. it. I like it. Cesar, wrap this up. Gerald is Yeah, so there's some issues. The The, stream is... The streams are... Yeah, they're kind of on top of each other. But Craig got here first, so I don't know what to say. Yeah, Cesar is very punctual. And I will say... Wait, who's telling me to wrap it up? No, 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 no. 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 You're not. There's comments from the Sun Show showing up in our stream, just like you. So as you know from Ghostbusters, do not cross the streams. Yeah, this is dangerous. Who knows what's going to happen? This is dangerous. The streams are crossing. That's, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Oh, okay. Are the suns relocating? Is that what's happening? <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. Too soon? It, that's my segue, Leah. That's All right. Segue, Let's Andrew. go. Let's talk about it because we haven't. <laughs> the arena talk. There it is. Because we haven't talked about it enough in the last. 15 years. Um, but obviously you guys did an emergency pod last night. Thanks for carrying the torch. I was out at dinner, did not think that news was going to drop at 745. Um, emergency pod last night. I highly recommend you go watch it, everyone, if you haven't, because Craig and Petey go through every possible question you could have. Craig also had an extensive Q&A with Javier Gutierrez um, with quotes also from Kevin Phelps from NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman and Craig kind of lays out the whole thing. So all of that, it's all on our website, gophnext.com, on our YouTube, PHNX Sports. Um, But, you know, there's still stuff out there, Craig. Doesn't matter how many questions you can answer. Stuff isn't even the right word. We'd use the other S word, but we try not to swear on this podcast. People will come up with things. So, Craig, what are some theories and things you've heard today alone? Today. Literally on the walk into the building today, like I... And within probably from the walk in the building to maybe the first 15 minutes I was in the building, I heard more theories than I can fit on a Twitter poll. Um, I heard, and you may have heard this one on a a local media outlet as well, that the Coyotes are going to, or Alex Marlowe is going to buy the land and sell the team and build the arena and get an expansion franchise. 
which would make him one of the worst businessmen in history because I think maybe he could sell this. Maybe like real. What are we saying optimistically, PD? Eight hundred million. Seven fifty. Eight hundred million. Uh, top. Okay, let's say that. Tops. And then what's the expansion for you right now? A billion. A billion. It's a billion right now. now. What so what's it going to be three years? years from now? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. We lost Craig's audio. Greg muted themselves. He said. Guest has muted themselves. Uh oh. Oh no! Oh, he says no. He didn't. He has to call back. Okay, call right back. Middle, call back right in the middle of a rant that we're going to post uh, on YouTube. It's okay. It's okay. Way but go, you Craig. you heard some crazy ones on the well, way. No, that, too. that's just first of all to finish up with Craig's thought on this. That's ridiculous. Like, I don't know how you would think this guy, Alex Morello Sr., would put this kind of effort, time, money, and and effort into buying the land and putting it an arena there and then selling the team. Well, what? Literally makes no sense. So, Craig, I just finished your thought, so I'm sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Fantastic, yep. Okay, yeah. Uh, what would that put him, like 500 million in the hole? Just yeah. To, uh, uh, like the- so, and, and, and people are saying, oh, well, it solved the mullet problem. Oh, okay, but it- What's the, what's would, the problem with the mullet? Well, apparently, the, you know, they, they can't be playing in here. The, a lot of people are unhappy about them playing in mullet. Maybe you've heard this before, but you know what? <laughs> if the NHL decides it's okay, who the hell cares? <laughs> they're, lo- they're losing less <laughs> money, according to them, and they're, they're, what they reported is yeah, they're losing what, less whatever money. Whatever that. Like, it's just a ludicrous idea. They, they won't lose that, right? $500 million over the next three years in mullet. They won't. You're not going to lose 500 half a billion dollars? So why would you do that? Where Where's the okay. thought process there? Here's, here's another one. He's okay. going to buy the land, sell the team, but keep the land and develop the real estate. Okay? That's another one I've heard. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Oh, they're going to find out in two weeks that they're leaving. They're, they're relocating in May. It, it is wild. The stuff that is out there. I, I, I don't even know what to do with some of this information. I, 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 I think the only honest thing that anyone can say right now, and I wish more people had the guts to say it is, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And this is, I, th- I think I mentioned this in the discord. This is why I admire Jeff Merrick. He said it on 32 thoughts. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't either. And nobody else does. All these lunatics throwing out these theories, these half-baked theories with their half-ass sourcing, half-ass reporting. Give me a break. You have no idea what's happening. And some of these theories are just, they're just from, they, they just sound like lunatics when they're throwing these things out there. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But I here, here's my feeling on this. I feel like Alex Morello doesn't want to sell this team. I feel like this is personal to him. Like, almost ego-driven, he wants to win this thing. I think they're going to let him get to auction, see what happens. And then it's on him. Again, it's all on him to make this happen. If, it, if he doesn't win the auction, all bets are off at that point. Yeah, but Craig, here again, if you're – if the auction's been posted and he's been driving the, the – trying to get this to auction, and now it's done, it's going to happen in, in June, we've got the date – I don't understand what would a force a sale. I don't know who would be behind the the forcing of this franchise to move to somewhere else. It just makes no sense to me. The league is stuck by this franchise through all of the the different things that have happened to this franchise over the last twenty years. Why now? Once the once right. this is set and they've got an auction date where where Gary Bettman said we're going to support him through this auction. We've yep. we've heard him say that. Bill Daly said that. I don't yep. understand how people think now all of a sudden in May they're going to go, oh, "Okay, we were just kidding." I I I I I think that opens up there there's so many like you can't do that. I think there might be a lawsuit. Say it. Maybe? Go ahead and say it. It's there's a, a lawsuit. Yeah. There's a lawsuit. That's how they open up the Alex Morello's not going to go, wait, wait a minute here. I own the team. They're playing in an arena that there's no bylaws saying they have to play in an arena of a certain size. And there is no bylaw anywhere that states that, that they have to. So let's clear that up. And, and, and I'm set to do this auction on June 27th. To think that this team is going to move be, before June 27th, I, I don't know where you can come up with that theory. I just Everybody's don't. Everybody's got a source, Petey. Everybody's got a source. They're yeah, talking but, to but, people, talking to but, lots of people. But Craig, you know what sources do? And you've said this. I've learned one of the few things I've learned from you about journalism. Sources, no matter who they are, have an agenda. So yep. whatever those sources are, hey, guess what? There are some people who want this team to move to Salt Lake. Do you think maybe they might be putting some of this mud in the water? Yeah, maybe. 
Like maybe that's that's where some of this source material is coming from. And you have to go look at some of the connections that they the, some of these so-called reporters have with some of the people that are in the, the potential group with Salt Lake City. There are always agendas. And so look through those agendas. All Craig has done here in the last 24 hours, including the show last night, is give facts. These are the facts. There's no conjecture or theory. The auction is the 27th of June. If they get the auction, the league says, and the league has said they're going to support the continuation of Morello owning this team in Arizona. We've heard it. If they don't win the auctions on June 27th, all bets are off. Alex Alex Morello himself has said that through Javier Gutierrez tonight on, on the show, on scripts. He said, if, if we don't win the auction, we're going to have to look at potentially relocation. I don't know what other facts besides those two things are out there. I don't understand how you can get any other I, any other conclusions besides those two facts? I don't know. And just one more thing to add to that before we move on. I've been hearing the same stuff for 15 years. I've been hearing these same sorts of theories or certainties from whether it's media or staff in the NHL, whoever. Uh, it's the same crap that I was hearing with Winnipeg, with Quebec, with, with uh, well, uh, Portland was almost a reality, as you know. Um, but with multiple others, you know, with Houston. We, we heard they were going to Seattle. We heard all of this stuff. You know what was, you know what was the same, what was consistent in all those? Gary Bettman had conting, contingency plans, but his commit was always to Arizona first. If he got Arizona sorted out, he was going to keep the team in Arizona. He just had to have backup plans. Do I believe there are backup plans? Absolutely. I think you'd be a moron to think there are not. But to say that this is happening or that is happening before the, the auction, God, I, I just... I, I wish I had the courage when some of these people are floating these ideas to me to just say, you know what, shut up or just walk away. Just walk away. Like you, you have no idea what you're talking about. And the good news is, Craig, we only have to deal with it for another three months. <laughs> we think. Oh, boy. All right. Well, there's been enough arena talk. Let's move on to yes. a hockey conversation um, and I think a positive one. Because Connor Ingram today was named Arizona mm -hmm. chapter of PHWA's nominee for the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. Craig, you also you had two stories go up today. Um, another one on gophnext.com about Connor Ingram and why he is the nominee. Can you, you know, in your own words, explain because you are part of this chapter of the PHWA, why Connor Ingram? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows his story by now that he checked himself into the league and PA uh, assistance program. Um, you know, he, he he was diagnosed with a disorder. They, it led to a lot of things. It led to him drinking. It led to insecurity around people. He had anxiety issues. Uh, he didn't feel comfortable with people. It led to loneliness. But he checked himself in and he got help for it. Um, as he said in the story, I didn't mean for this to go to public, but it did. And once it did... He just decided to own it and talk about it and try and help other people through it. I can't think, like, I, when you look at the Coyotes roster this year, and it's our job, and it's my job as the president of this chapter, to figure out who the best candidate is on each roster each season. I can't think of a better candidate who has demonstrated the quality as a per perseverance and dedication to the game of hockey than Connor Ingram with all that he's been through to get to where he is now among the league leaders, top 20 in, you know, in, in save percentage and goal saved above expected. And then just the, the courage just to talk about it so openly. I don't, Lee, I don't know if we were able to put that quote on. I can it read ginormous. it. I'll yeah, read if it. you can read it. It's just, it, it's, it's wow. Did you really just say that to me? Yeah. So here's the quote from Connor Ingram. He said, it took a while for me to share my story. It goes for me being locked in a hotel room in Nashville and the whole world thinking you do cocaine nine times a week to being able to tell your story the way you want to. There's definitely highs and lows and there's definitely people that only know my name because they think I was a raging heroin addict in 2021. But I mean, that's how it goes. I'm comfortable with it. I know what went on. So to deal with it the way I do now, I think it helps people. Wow. <laughs> that, that quote, what he, when, what I, when he said it, I was like, buddy, you, you know you're on the record, right? Like cocaine and heroin in the same quote. Yeah. But but just so – and obviously that wasn't the, the issue. He just He's just trying to, to show how people exaggerate things. But he's he's so comfortable talking about this now, which is crazy when you consider the disorder. But – a couple other things that jumped out for me at this, the, the desire to help other people. And he said he'd had a lot of people reach out to him saying what sort of impact he's had by telling his story. And he's been telling it for years now. Adam Bingham did the story several years ago for The Athletic. 
Emily Benjamin did a phenomenal job of it for NHL.com. So that that's one thing. He's just trying to help other people with similar issues. The other thing that I've never heard in my entire time in this career is I wanted to win this. I started thinking about the Masterton Trophy earlier this year. Who thinks about the Masterton Trophy? You're wow. thinking, oh, yeah, I'd like to win the Hart Trophy or the Norris or the Vezina, but the Masterton Trophy? Like, he started thinking about how cool it would be to have that honor with with what he's been through and what he's trying to do for other people. I love talking to this guy. He doesn't actually like talking to media. He's nervous. It's part of the disorder. But when he does, he is just spectacular. He is so open and so articulate and so insightful. He had to be our nominee this year. Yeah, he's an impressive human being. And I and I mental health is is a huge topic everywhere everywhere and it's it's and everyone it's in your home it's in your place of work and for him to come out and be it's hard and you see him at the when he talks to us at the, the practice rink it's it's hard for him to do that but I, I i support anybody that's out there trying to help other people deal with things that people don't want to talk about and connor ingram i, I tell you what I, i'm so worried craig because people don't often hear the stories from the Arizona Coyotes. They don't. It's all the teams in the East Coast that, oh, it's this famous player. He did something and he chipped a tooth and now he's the Masterton. This is a story that's worthy of that award. And I hope that that that, that your story helps get some traction for Connor Ingram because I, I think it's important that people know his story. Absolutely. Um, and for those who haven't had the opportunity to maybe get out to a game at Mullet and see Connor Graham or see the team, especially coming after this win, the team has an open practice tomorrow, Woo-hoo! April 6th. Where is that? In is Chandler. It? Chandler. So, what are you guys planning for that open practice tomorrow? Yeah. Just uh, save me a seat. My Craig, car you... has a flat tire tomorrow, mm. actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm washing my hair. <laughs> this is awkward. This is awkward. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah have so, fun. I won't, I won't see either of you. I would I would take the under on that one. Craig. Good luck. What time is that at, Leah? I don't know. What time is it? I'm not even going to say. I'm not even going to dignify that with an answer. You guys don't even know when practice is. You don't I care. literally don't know. You don't I care don't. that I'm going to practice tomorrow. And then okay. they fly out right from there, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I'm hearing they yeah. fly out right from there. Well, oh, enjoy. Say hi to Craig goodness. when you're there. Big road trip coming, though. Long yeah, big road trip. trip. Long. Oh, Very five long. Think we're, Yeah, we're going to see this team one more time at Mullet. That's it. Crazy. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Speaking of. No. <laughs> no. I, the, I, mullet is it? Magician, is it time? the mullet is magician it time? was on his way out. Like he thought this one was after the second period. He, he was gone. Home. And listen, the traffic downtown tonight, it's, it's bad. bad. It took him some time getting back. So don't judge him on his the quality of his tricks tonight because. Oh, we'll I, judge him. I, I, I think that should be a caveat to, to most of his tricks, shouldn't it? <laughs> Let's not judge him. And I know there's some new people. We've got a couple of Canadians. We've got somebody from Vancouver in here. I just saw uh, another Canadian fan here. So this might be first timers to the show that don't understand the Mullet Magician. Every time the Coyotes win at home, we talk about how the magic exists at Mullet Arena. And, and and lo and behold, there's an actual magician that comes in and does, does tricks. And they are amazing. So set the bar high. If you're tuning in for the first time, be ready to be amazed. And without further ado, it's the Mullet Magician. The Coyotes win at home. It's a time for more magic. Today we have a card trick. We pick up at the cards, the black or the red, the red, the black, and we put them in the hand and we shuffle them. Oh, red. We move them around. We move them around and we take it to the top card. It's a red card. And we take it and we set it down. And then we put the cards back in my hand and we shuffle them again. And we take out the top card, it's a red card again. We take the red card over here with the red cards. We put the black cards here, we go, ooh, ooh, abracadurzi, abracamosier. Boom, the black cards are there, boom, the red cards are there. Well, how we do it? It's a magic mullet, man. <laughs> wow, that was uh, some kind of sleight of hand there by the mullet magician. <laughs> Were there, I, were there actually were there actually cuts in that film? There, there were no cuts in that film. There were no cuts. There's no editing oh, in any God. of the magician's amazing tricks. <laughs> I, I just don't know what's going to happen because we talked about the draft a lot today. The draft coming up in Las Vegas, and we're expecting some visits from the mall magician in the city of magic and wonder, Las Vegas. And I cannot imagine what he is going to do and take that city by storm. 
That's where all the great magicians end up, is Vegas. Oh. Just saying. <laughs> You think the ma magician would be willing to cover the auction as well? <laughs> he might. He might. What a week that's going to be. What a oh, week oh my God. Craig better it's use so it. Coyotes. It's it so um, coyotes, right? It, uh huh. B said, B said the magician's still uh, undefeated against CGI allegations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, don't think, you don't think people are saying, wow, look at the trickery? You don't think so? <laughs> yeah. well, oh, Lord. All right. <sighs> uh, well, Ren, it's hard to sit here and watch those sometimes. So <laughs> I have to get really close to the monitor. I actually don't get really close. He's embarrassed for his friend. I, my friend, I get a little <laughs> Craig, anything else before we let you go? There's a lot tonight. Just just this. Uh, Saul told us in our staff meeting that we're going to be rolling out some new merch. So I'm wondering, now that I'm looking at this, can, can we get a Cody tie? Is that a possibility? Oh. I'd, wear, I'd wear a Cody tie. Merch stuff happening. Stay I might tuned. wear a Cody tie. Yeah, Cody tie would be that would be that would be fire. By the way, the open practice is at eleven a.m. Okay, yes, <laughs> that's eleven yes, it is. So you there must, you go. Leah will be waking up then. Petey will be eating lunch. No, you'll be eating dinner. No, by he'll that be time. on his oh, first seven. his yeah. first nap yeah. of the day. Yeah, it's nap time by eleven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, uh, Craig, and, and thanks again, Craig. Honestly, for for yeah, clearing up seriously. some of these these rumors. And again, I I don't know the validity is. I don't understand because I want to make this clear again. Craig has talked to the league. He has talked to the team. He's talked to representatives of ownership. He's talked to agents. I don't know what other sources outside of that. He's talked to political sources within the city of Phoenix. I don't know where else you can get information from. I just, I don't understand it because those are the players that are involved in this, in all of this arena deal. Those are the people involved. So if you're not one of those people, what, what, what does your opinion matter? I'm sorry to say that, but it doesn't matter. Those are the players in the room. Those are the people Craig's talked to. I don't get it. I don't get these narratives. So thank you, Craig, for talking to people that are actually in the room. Yeah, I, like, I, like, like I've said before, I, I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not saying that everything, that I have all the facts. I don't. I don't. There's, some, there's probably stuff happening behind the scenes that I don't know about. But I am reaching out to anybody that, that might be, as I call them, in the room, right? I, I, I don't care about secondary sources. And I think that's where a lot of these problems occur. Like, some some media will talk to people that don't necessarily have firsthand knowledge of the situation, but they'll still use that information. You can't do that as a journalist. And with that, I'll sign off and say goodbye to you guys. Have a great weekend, everybody. Oh, boy. All right, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Get home safe. See you in Chandler tomorrow. <laughs> I hope for Craig's sake that he takes an OGs when he gets home tonight. I, I do. After this week. The stress. After this week. Are He's you buzzing. kidding me? I need an OGs. I need an OGs Keith last Blakely's night. Here. Do you know Keith Blakely's here? I bet you Keith Blakely's got no G's right now. I mean, I hope everybody does as long as you're 21 or older. He, he's over 21. Okay, then uh, OG's, obviously, it's Flavoring Friday. It's the end of the week. It was. It's the end of a crazy week. And we're very excited to announce the winner of Gummy Madness. Who as we won know, Gummy Madness? Who won? Who cares about the, the Iowa game on Sunday at noon with the Caitlin Clark? <laughs> Who cares about that? Who won Gummy Madness, Leah? Your 2024 Gummy Madness champion is the Sleep Edition Gummy. I, and I was an upset. I was thinking happy, the, 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 the happy balance was going to come So you can in. get your Gummy Madness BOGO deals all weekend until April 8th on Monday. So make sure you stop by your local dispensary and get your BOGO deal on the Sleep Edition OG's Gummy. I need it. I've been having a really hard time sleeping. There's been a lot going on. So I definitely need it. I'm going to go get it. If you've never tried OG's, delicious flavors, something for everyone, scratch made locally here in Arizona. So to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, you can head on over to ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. And then, oh, you know where you have to go next? You have to go to Circle K. Yes. And I will. I, I know those in the Discord got a little glimpse into my <laughs> anxiety today. But this is true because I had to go. I, we had a meeting here downtown. Yes. And then I had to go to another eye appointment, which we'll talk about another time. I've got to <laughs> I finally solved the eye problem. And I know everybody's concerned and probably lost sleep over it. And by the time I was ready to come back downtown to go to the mall that I looked at my gas gauge, it was at 50. I mean, 50 Petey, you're Buddy, really letting yourself go. That's fumes for me. 50 <laughs> is fumes. Like it's, it's what is it for 18 miles downtown? I might only make it downtown and back and forth two or three times on 50. So I I steered right into my local Circle K again. True, 
and I took a picture of it. Yep. So if, I, if you're in the Discord, you saw me pumping gas at Circle K today because it is America's thirst stop, snack stop, and my gas stop. And the most satisfying thing about getting gas at Circle K, Leah knows what it is, entering your phone number and it says, hey, you're part of the inner circle. You saved, well, I saved three cents, but in your first five, you saved 25 cents. Per gallon. Yep. Every time. And it tells you and yep. you feel really good about it because you're part of the inner circle, their membership program, where you save 25 cents per gallon on your first five Phillips, three cents per gallon on every gallon after that. And you get the six item free on all of their famous Circle K products, like their pizza, their coffee, and their Polar Pops, their ice cold fountain drinks. Join the inner circle for free. It's so easy. You download the Circle K app today, enter your phone number, boom, you're in. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations only. Visit CircleK.com for details. All right, PD, let's make sure we talk Angela, about... seriously, like, if you're going to drive to Chandler, which is way out in, in western New Mexico, <laughs> make sure you have gas. And, and Angela, if you just take a picture, throw it in the, the Die Hard Discord of you getting gas at Circle K. I would appreciate it. Thank oh you. Oh, my goodness. All right. I want to make sure we acknowledge everything that happened in this game. We haven't even talked about no. the Minnesota Man Crush. What a Nick shot. Nick Bukestad, his 22nd goal of the season, PD. Is that, I'm is surprised. He over 22? 22 goals. 20? I'm shocked that also. there was not a vote in for Desert Dog. For I, I think I, I had to go. I, 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 I always want to get the Minnesota Man Crush his, his flowers because he is deserved. And by the way, that shot, elite. When you can find Nick Bukestad between the hash marks, money. Like that's money. Top shelf, bigger, as Tyson Nash might say. What would we say? Bar down back of the net, probably. Yeah, that's what Tyson Asher probably goal say. Goal scores goal. But it was, it was goal scores goal. Of course, he's got twenty two. Um, outstanding job. But but he's kind of been the anchor to that Schmaltz Keller line right now, and you see the points that that line is putting up night after night after night. So uh, congratulations to Nick Bugs' dad <laughs> uh, on, on the season. He's had since the the birth of his third child. He's been in fuego. Yes, he absolutely that was, that was has. Done. So you're reading no, I'm the reading. News? I'm reading um, the <laughs> NHL. Don't want to bother you. <laughs> there's, there's like the NHL sends out a thing at the end of every night. It's technically the morning skate, but it's for the East Coast people. But I read it at night because I'm still awake. Um, this, so this was the first time in franchise history the Coyotes have done multiple had multiple comeback games like this because it's so funny. I was. Sitting there, like there's been so many games this season, not so many. There's been a handful where, like, listen, I'm t like, I get tired. We're human, mm -hmm. work, life, it gets tiring. And sometimes when it's 7 p.m. on a Friday mm -hmm. and you're tired and it's 4 yeah. 1 Vegas, you're yeah. thinking, I'm just a little tired yes, tonight. Life. It's, you know, and I had the thought. I had it because every single time I've had that feeling this season, which honestly has maybe been two other times, the Coyotes have come back and done yeah. something insane. Like, I think one was the Ottawa game where they came mm -hmm. back from that crazy deficit and came back. And, and then the other was the Seattle game recently, like two weeks ago, where it was a really boring game. And then they scored with like minutes to go, tied it, and then Dylan Gunther won it in overtime. Uh, I, I don't like, but the fact that the thought went through my head tonight, I said, you know what? You're so tired. I'm so tired. Yep. I don't know how I'm going to like, yep. like I'll just then, be very transparent right now. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to like yep. get up to be on the show. Yep. Like this has just been an exhausting week. Well, the coyote said, we got you. We got you. And here you are and on I've been, that roller I've coaster. Hot, we, we started the show like this. Like I'm, I'm it's awake. Roller, I'm now here. You won't sleep I'm tonight. up. I won't sleep. You're ready to sleep at seven. I was I and when I came in after the first period, Leah, you were reclined fully and you were nap time. It, you were tired and you looked tired, and you are up now because the Coyotes did it too. And Nick Nelson, what do you see? Nick Nelson's question in the chat. What, what is, is the well, buddy? I said it at the beginning of the show. This was it. This was it. One of seven. Here. Well, this it was, was Coyotes it. team history at least. Yeah, not back to Winnipeg. Well, we don't. Uh, we're, we're not um, going that. And by the way, Shelby, I apologize. I'm going to apologize to Shelby. Why? From Chandler, a little offended at the at the, the the New Mexico comment. Oh, I mean, and Danielle lives in Mesa. Yeah, but, but, but I pick on Danielle all the time. <laughs> She's used to it. Shelby, I apologize. It's so fantastic down there, great rink. Go enjoy it down at the the Ice Den, Chandler. Check so the stat that I was reading was uh, it was their second three goal, third period comeback win of 2023-24, the most among all teams. First time in franchise history. They've done so multiple times in a campaign. And the first 
team with multiple such victories in a season since Florida in 2021-22. That's amazing. The six goals in the span of 906 that I mentioned at the top of the show, six uh, marks the f- fastest six in the third period by any team since October 30th, 1988. <laughs> Coincidentally, it was the original Jets that what? did it. Eight minutes and 14 seconds versus the LA Kings. Is that true? The last time was this franchise. Yes. This franchise won the Olympics. In 1988. That's crazy. Plus, the Coyotes matched their franchise record for most goals in a period, a feat they achieved on March 28th, 2013. Through six goals in the first period against Nashville. They also scored six consecutive tallies in the third period for the second time in franchise history, along with the aforementioned October 30th, 1988. This is why I'm reading that is Leah's the news. Nugget. There's another. We need a Leah's nugget. That's why I'm reading the news. We need a Leah's nugget theme song. I'm reading the NHL PR email. Leah's nugget graphic and it's not even my nuggets. Song. That's it's, well, I'm calling it's Leah's the nugget. NHL That's amazing. PR nugget. But but what's ironic about all of those stats is this team is is at the bottom of the standings and yet they're doing things that haven't been done in the NHL since 1988. <laughs> The don- That's crazy. The Don't Effect. So that, it's not the Tampa Bay Lightning doing that. No. It's not the Colorado Avalanche doing that. Vegas Golden Knights. Edmonton Oilers with McDavid and Dreisaitl. No. It's the Arizona Coyotes. It is. Buddy, <laughs> you've been carcone. <laughs> you've been carcone. Don't and carcone. I Go, love don't it. Don't and carcone. Another t shirt. We have so many t shirt so ideas. So many t shirt ideas. Or are just clipping the whole show. Sending CWP, it to our merch people. Get out people. your checkbook because we're going to start printing oh, them. Oh, my goodness. Another guy we forgot to give flowers. Ooh. Nick Schmaltz, 500th career game. game. Congrats to Nick Schmaltz. Uh, he also had. He had two points on the night, points. two assists yeah. tonight on uh, the Keller goal. A nice, nice job by Nick Schmaltz. 500 games. That's, a, that's quite an achievement. Um, for Nick Schmaltz. Yeah, um, congrats. Yeah, and I thought that that line looked really good offensively tonight. I thought they had a little bit of jump in the offensive zone, so congratulations to Nick Schmaltz. And 501 will take place very soon. Very soon. And let's take a look at the Coyotes' upcoming schedule because it's on the road. The Mole Magician can take a vacation oh, for a week. He's got one more opportunity. San Jose Sharks this Sunday at 3 p.m. We will be doing a live watch long here on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Make sure that you download the prize pick app before yes. because we're going to be making picks. We want you to pick along with us, um, but we will be live the entirety of the game and afterwards for a post game show. So set a reminder, PHNX Sports YouTube. Then it's on to Seattle on Tuesday. Vancouver on tough Wednesday for a really tough back to back across the border. They're very close together, but you still have still to go through customs. customs. Then it's on to Edmonton on Friday, who just beat the Colorado Avalanche tonight. Yeah, badly too. And then that following Sunday is against Calgary, and that's the road trip. Yeah, so. it's funny though when you look at some of these teams. I think the San Jose Sharks clearly this is two teams, nothing to play for. But I anticipate a good game there because uh, that team plays fast, and so do the Coyotes. And uh, it's going to be fun. And if you haven't joined us for one of our watch alongs they're a lot of fun we have fun but we also try to teach the game i you know me if you've followed this before i like to talk about the game and i like to teach people the game i'll have the whiteboard out lee and i will have a lot of fun danielle will be the magic band the mac and i'm not sure what the hell craig's gonna do <laughs> i we're not sure yet <laughs> craig has some crazy ideas that yeah. i don't know if we're gonna allow him to we'll, do we'll we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll we'll see but but that one will be fun but this road trip when you look at seattle another team that i think it, expectations were higher this season after they beat Colorado in the first round last year and they struggled a little bit this at times this season injury bug hit them a little bit and I, they've struggled to score um so so I think that that game that they're having a tough time right now because they're out of it and they're not playing for a playoff spot that that actually might be winnable in Seattle the following night in Vancouver is gonna be really tough on a back-to-back clearing customs late night uh and Vancouver's playing well right now and we saw that what happens when they played here in the mullet so that team can score and then going to Edmonton right after that Edmonton's got something to play for. They're trying to beat this Vegas Golden Knight team in in second in the Pacific, and, and Vegas better look out because the LA Kings are right on their trail too with this an easier a, schedule. This was a bad loss for this Vegas huge, tonight. This huge, huge bad. Two points. Yeah, they're one point ahead of the LA Kings right now. And the Kings right now have an easier schedule coming down. Can you imagine the Vegas Golden Knights being a wild card team? And you're 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 a top team in the Pacific or the Central. You've worked so hard all season to get the first the f- first place in your prospective division, and you open up with the Vegas Golden Knights. 
Oh, so I, I tell you what, Edmonton other fans, we hope you get second and maybe the Kings slide into third and you, you got the Kings again for a rematch from last year. But um, the playoff races are tightening up and I think that makes things difficult for the for the Coyotes because they've got a few playoff teams left. They've got three on their, their schedule and it's going to be exciting. It absolutely will be. Can't wait for playoff hockey. By the way, the practice in Chandler is at 1130. Just you said 11. Well, that's what Nick Nelson in the chat said. I took his word for it. I just got an email. It's at 1130. So I, I just wanted, well, he, Nick wanted to be there early. I just want. Yeah. Get, get there. At, get there at 11 for sure. And get Craig to sign autographs. <laughs> he loves it when everybody goes up to him. Oh, God. Especially about the arena. Oh, my God. So to, to come up with the wildest. We should almost come up with the wildest theories we can come up with. And we have local reporters have set the bar very high uh, <laughs> on some crazy ideas. They've set it high. So let's see if we can outdo that and, and maybe drop some stuff in the Discord if you're a diehard. Drop some crazy theories on what's going to happen with this franchise between now and June 27th. By the way, June 28th is the draft. We're going to be there. Yes. We're also going to be there on the 27th. You and I are going to be there. Craig will not be there. Craig will be at downtown at the Arizona Land Department. And that is true. And we we have already we were this is how much we're trying to deliver the news to the 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 PHNX hockey community. We are already planning the show for the 27th. True story. Yep. We spent time we are planning the show for the 27th right now because as you well know when things happen, we will be going live, so expect news of the auction as it happens on PHNX. See, people said they said 11. I just got an email that says 1130. I would still get there at 11. Yeah. I'll just say that. Um, all right. Let's take a look at the punch card. See where we are. Game 76. 76 games done, PD. We just have six to go. Halfway through the last full line of the punch card. I truly cannot believe we're here. Yeah, and that's one of the things I like about our punch card is that it can kind of track the season for us. And I know when we get through that first line way back in October, I'm like, there's no way we can get through this. There's no way we can do this for another season. And here we are on the last line, and I am ecstatic. I want it to be the point, though, when we're at the last line and we're sitting here with six games to go going, who are they going to play in the playoffs? Oh. What's the playoff matchup going to be like? Oh, and then we're going to talk about how they're doing or is the stats against this team, the stats oh, against that team. I can't Can wait. It's what I'm talking about. And like, if they win these three games, they'll play Colorado. Land and if they win, oh. proposals. We can talk about playoff matchups. Please, please sign me up. Listen, I mentioned already, it's been a long week. Drink of Four Peaks this weekend. It's the final four weekend. We have men's and women's for the next three straight days, plus NHL, plus NBA, plus MLB. This is peak sports season, and nothing is better than watching sports with a Four Peaks in hand. So make sure you grab a Four Peaks beer, whatever kind of beer you love, whether it's light and fresh, maybe like a golden lager, no lager something like a wow, time. a little more citrus, a kilt lifter, something darker like a stout. Four Peaks has it all. So make sure you check out Four Peaks wherever you buy your beer. You can also swing by the 8th Street Pub. Visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite beers and events and check out at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You must be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks and please enjoy responsibly. And if you noticed in the show last night in the Emergipod, because it started later than we are anticipating, there might have been some Four Peaks Gold Lager making a, 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 an appearance. I didn't really hide it, so <laughs> but it's eight o'clock at night. And what am I supposed to do? So the golden lager, there's sponsors, so it's fair, right? I can do that. And then we need to go out, and when you're buying your Four Peaks beer, get yourself some Arizona lottery tickets. Get the scratchers for their newest game, Arizona Adventure, because it's it's winding down. The Arizona Adventure, they're, they're going to be giving away these prizes very yeah. soon. So you got to get out and get your Arizona Adventure scratchers. As soon as you can. There's three ways to win. Scratch the tickets. They're beautiful tickets with iconic landscapes from the state of Arizona. Two, go to geolocated destinations within the state of Arizona. There's 10 of them all the way from Yuma to Tucson and everywhere in between where you just have to go and be there. Download the app. Say you're there and you're registered to win cash and prizes. And the third way is take your ticket and enter it online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. The Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It is also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. 
All right, before we wrap up, we have some super chats. So let's get to them and we'll start. Well, Ogie just sent $1.99 and he probably had a message after it and I just didn't see it. So Ogie, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll just take your money. <laughs> Thanks, Ogie. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sure you had something brilliant you to can, say, Ogie. You can message us in Discord. Yeah. Um, Charles sent seven seventy seven and said, "Yotes hit the jackpot in the third. I love it. Always yeah. with the creative. He's, he's very super creative. chats. Yeah. Then we have a super chat from Alex four ninety nine. Thank you guys for providing such great coverage of the Yotes. It's one a.m. here on the East Coast, but still got to keep up with the I, Yotes. I, I will say, I, oh, I don't remember what we call these things. You do. They're a picture. They're avatar. Uh, yeah." Alex is rocking it out. Yeah, you I guys like got to get on the guitar I like together. I like, the, I like the guitar. I, I that's very fancy. He's got a very nice setup. They've got a microphone. I need to bring that to next party at Craig's house. Yes, by the way. Wildly Coyote sent us a dollar ninety nine. It's a magic. If you know, you know. If you know, and, you know. and I will say this: it was the pinch finger emoji we used for Matthias Michelli, and we talked about it on the last edition of Walking and Talking. If you haven't seen it, check it out because Matthias Michelli was was really a, a really good interview. Some really fun tidbits in there. But we thought for just a, a brief moment tonight that he got the Walking and Talking bump, which usually happens two games after the Walking and Talk. And we thought it happened today. Yep. Alas, it was off the defender's leg, and it was Josh Doan's goal. But so he still got the assist. Got the assist. Not necessarily a bump. Like that would be a carconed bump today. Yeah. Like, I, got, I, I mean, he yeah. walked and talked with him he earlier did. in the oh, year. Buddy. And he I, he scored immediately after. Yep. And he's he every time I see him at the ice then he said, We need to go walk in and talk again. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. We said it again last week. And and there he goes. So there you go. Oh, is Leah actually from Arizona, BC? The answer is no. Leah is Canadian <laughs> from the Toronto area. Not the Toronto area, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. There we go. Fox knew it. There you go. That should be part of it. See, and this is what we forget, Leah, because you and I have had these conversations at this desk for three years. Mm -hmm. And so we just assume that everybody listens to every show for three years. And there are so many people <laughs> that just don't know all of our little jokes and our inside stories and our wheel of fantasy and I am beer. And there are so many fun things that we do here. We Imagine need to do. Someone... I think we're going to do a recap this summer. Can we do a recap? Yeah, we can do a recap. Okay. The in the no show, like HK. We haven't used oh, HK yeah. in a while. Yep. We, if you know, you know what HK means. If you don't, you don't. HK. <laughs> All right, PD. Let's wrap this one up. Final thoughts before we I, I, go this to bed. This is impressive that this team played this well against a team that's that's vying for a playoff spot this late in the season when the Coyotes games don't matter. And, and it's impressive that they were able to not just win the game, but they able to fight back like this in the third period. It's incredibly impressive. And, and it was at a, at a historic rate. And it's not just, oh, they, they made a comeback. After reading your Leah's Nuggets, <laughs> that's historic comeback. Historic numbers. And when you go back to 1988 for that that kind of a sc scoring outburst, that's impressive by this team. And it's a lot of the young guys. So that was fun. And, and it was a fun game to talk about. And and we're winding this thing down. And I'm glad they got a win against a really good team. Yeah, that, that was a feel-good one. It had to feel good for them. A great way to finish the homestand. Honestly, this was a pretty, a very solid homestand. It was really enjoyable. Um, still time to cement the fifth overall pick because, like we talked about already, it's a really tough go here coming yeah, up. But this is. one was fun, and these are the moments we have to remember. And after a roller coaster of a week, a roller coaster of 48 hours, this one really felt good. Yeah. So I hope that everybody, you know, you take it easy. I mean, it's late. It's, a, it's literally approaching midnight. Oh my gosh, you, it is yeah, approaching midnight. You take it easy, enjoy it, relax yes. tomorrow. It's a matinee manatee game it's gonna on be a Sunday. Fun one. It's going to be a fun manatee. So let's just take it easy the rest of the week and then yep. uh, just a little less than two weeks left in the Coyote and season. And then we'll be in so Tucson before you know it. Watch we'll the Roadrunners it'll, it'll be off season. We'll be talking to draft experts again. It's going to be a blast. So yeah. I can't. Wait. I can't wait to get ready for the draft. We, you know, if you want to hear draft experts, and we don't mean like from local, we're we're talking the best draft yeah. experts. Chris Peters, Chris Peters Corey Bob Pronman. McKenzie, Corey Pronman. Like if they, Craig they, Button. Oh, Craig Button's gonna come. Yeah. Like we're talking that some of the best prognosticators in North America will be on our show to help break down the draft. So stay tuned for all the stuff we've got coming. Not just now, but all the way up until the draft when Leah and I will be at the Sphere and Craig will be in a courtroom. Can't wait. Is it a courtroom? Anyway, I, I hope don't know. Not a it's 2 a.m. on the East Coast. Let's, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, everybody. Hit the like button on this video before you head out. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube so you don't miss our live shows and you don't miss all of our extra content. 
as well. And make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts because we have weekly audio only episodes dropping. Rick talk it this week. That was a great, a one. great one. Make sure you check that out and you can follow us. On Twitter, at S. Peters Hockey, at Leah Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at Abraka Danielle. You can follow the show on Twitter, at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night, everybody. And we will see you all on Sunday. We all silly like the mayor.